Hey everybody, I'm Joe Deganzik and this is Smarter Home Life. So over the past couple months, a number of you have asked for some more how-to content. And I thought, you know, it kind of brings me back to an idea that I had a number of years ago for a project that I did and documented but never turned it into a video. And I thought, now is the right time to do this and combine it with another product from a company that I got a request uh, for them to, for me to review one of their products about a month or two ago. And I thought this could make something really cool. So this is gonna be about LED lighting, specifically uh, the first part is gonna be talking about those LED strips, puck lights, that flexible LED kind of uh, either rope light or tape light that appears to not be dimmable and to make it dimmable. And of course, then you can link it to your smart home and control it. Part two is going to be these really cool underlit shelving units. Now this can be used if you have a, a cool kind of liquor uh, collection or glassware models, anything that you want to underlight, and they've got multiple options and it's really cool stuff, all made in the USA. That's from liquorshelves.com slash Armana Productions, who is the sponsor of that, of the second part of this video. So, you know, back in the old days, that's like five or 10 years ago when we were traditionally using like halogen or some kind of incandescent lighting for under cabinet lighting, could even be applied to like rope light and so forth. If you wanted to dim it, you simply hooked its transformer, which generally was a magnetic transformer to practically any kind of dimmer, whether it's smart or not, and you're good to go. There's no issue, full range dimming, no problem. Enter the world of LED and all kinds of interesting challenges. And the question is, how do you make this happen? So many of you have also um, asked me specifically about, okay, you've got those um, Tokic lights, you know, basically underneath your cabinets in your little kitchenette and what, what's under there, how are you doing that, how are you dimming it, and so forth. Well, number one, uh, I am particularly, uh, or specifically using these diode strips. These are from Ikea, and they come in these little 10-inch lengths. You generally get four to a kit, and uh, you're probably familiar with these, but I'll show you anyways, that you can basically kind of gang these guys. You can put them together um, to form longer strips, and they're, you know, like I said, about 10 inches long each, or based on their little wiring harness, uh, you can basically, if you have to space them out, they've got long wires that you can place them in any kind of configuration. And I have two and two and then one. So I used, you know, a couple of kits. But the question was, all right, I, I can put them there and hot glue them underneath the uh, the cabinets there in, in the kind of toe kick channel. But then how do you control them? And this has been a problem because LEDs, you can't just slap any kind of uh, transformer or dimmer on it. It has to be specifically dimmable. And years ago, I, I wanted to do this actually in my previous place with my previous kitchen. This was kind of before these became more readily available. So you have manufacturers now catering to the hobbyists and us DIY people and, and other people who are kind of installed these in permanent installations by making LED dimmable drivers. They're kind of called drivers and not necessarily transformers. And these are uh, driver devices that can be dimmed by generally, and I say generally carefully here, almost any dimmer. And that's your triac dimmers, your rotary dimmers, your smart home dimmers, practically anything. It used to be that you had to have a specific type of dimmer that was paired with the uh, LED driver because they had to work together. And that's that was the name of the game. Now you can just find them on Amazon. Specifically, I'm using one uh, called ABI. And I found this, like I said, a couple years ago, and it's generally pretty good. It's hooked into my Insteon dimmers, which are controlled through my whole smart home system. Now, let me take one little step back in that generally LEDs themselves are inherently, and again, I say generally as well, they're inherently dimmable. But again, the LED driver, or you might think of it as a transformer, is really important because you have to maintain the right current and the right amount of juice getting to those LEDs Otherwise, you wind up with flicker. So, how do you make this work in terms of you know what, which one do you select, which you know which um, uh, capacity and so forth? You have to take a look at your existing little power blocks, the the LED drivers or transformers that might be attached to your wiring, especially from IKEA or from other places. If you've got those puck lights or whatnot, try to figure out what the output is, what the wattage is that it's providing. Generally, it's going to be 12 volts, and you want to basically exceed that so that depending on if you gang up a couple of extra um, strips or depending on how much of a, a roll of LED lights uh, that you've got and if you've got that connected to a couple different areas, you want to do that math, make sure that whatever transformer you were existing uh, using, 
that you're going to replace it with this new one that's dimmable, you want to make sure that transformer exceeds, uh, you know, matches or exceeds what you have. And I certainly, going from it looks like 5 or 10 watts to 45 watts, I've definitely got some headroom, definitely no problem. LEDs by themselves take up a very low amount of power, and so not every dimmer may be able to give you the full range. And in my specific case, um, I am not getting the full range of those LEDs, but generally IKEA probably didn't think that someone was going to bring in a, a dimmer and actually do their own um, kind of magic sauce <clears throat> to make these dimmable and to bring it into a smart home system. When I originally installed them, they were just on and off. So at the end of the day, you wire it up. I'm probably showing you some pictures here on the screen. I provided my own wire uh, to replace the little wire that they had, which was normally going to go into something like an LED tape light. You want to be cautious of your, your poles, your negative and your positive, kind of hot and neutral, so to speak. And uh, you wire it up, do the whatever connections you want, whether wire nuts or you know clamp or kind of crimp kind of connections, and then put it all together and you're good to go. Now again, in my case, because again, these LEDs take so little power, they're drawing so little energy. When I'm bringing them on with my smart home controls and with my dimmer, I have to come up to about 20, 25, maybe 30% before they will pop on. And then I've got full range dimming from there all the way up to 100. And I can come down to about 10% once they're on and then they'll pop off. Because again, I'm not using something, I, I, I opted for the less expensive solution and not like the 100 or $200 really super awesome solution to get absolute full range out of this. Um, so this is a good solution if you're looking for something that is gonna do this. These are white LEDs, by the way. This is not like RGB, we'll get to that here in a second. So it's basically two wire, uh, very, very simple concept. And again, this same idea can be applied to those puck lights. It can be applied to LED rope light. It can be applied to practically anything that's got a every LED product you're going to get, except for those kind of flickery Christmas lights. Um, those, well, we'll go into it in a future video. But at the end of the day, anything that's got a transformer or a LED driver, you should, and I say you should be able to replace with one of these um, dimmable drivers that you can find on Amazon. Specifically, you wanna make sure, I'll have the product link in the video description for you, but specifically, you wanna make sure that it's compatible with your general everyday dimmer. That's basically a triac based dimmer. And then you should be able to uh, be good to go. You can control it with your smart home or just put it on, you know, just a regular rotary dimmer if you would like. Um, you could even plug it into the wall that's wired into um, some sort of a switch that's got a dimmer on it, and you're good to go. And it's an easy solution. It makes it um, elegant, and this is something uh, that you can either hardwire or you can use the plug that comes with, uh, that, that's on one end of the side of the, uh, the, um, the uh, in my case, the ABI uh, dimmable uh, LED driver and you're good to go. So that's this project, that's the first part. And now let's move on to some fun stuff and some colorful underlit bar shelving in part two.